So I did an episode recently about album artwork, and I didn't get to some of the FAQs, some of the frequently asked questions that I see people talk about when it comes to album artwork. And so I wanted to tackle them in a separate video today. If you missed that first episode where I talk about why, how to make great album artwork, go to otherrecordlabels.com slash artwork where you can check out that episode plus the notes from that episode. Today, I just want to go over some frequently asked questions that I hear in our um, record label community on Facebook, <clears throat> excuse me, as well as I just kind of see circling around and questions I've had myself or questions I've dealt with um, with artists asking about artwork. So let's dive in. First of all, does design really matter? Does album artwork really matter? Well, some musicians feel like art doesn't matter. It's, um, but for me, it's one little thing. And I think that's a lot of musicians and people and record labels think, well, it's just one part of the whole puzzle, but that's to me why it does matter. And that's what I believe in marketing. Marketing is kind of, and great, great things are made up of, of lots of little great things. And so to me, album artwork is just one of those things. It's like mastering. Is mastering important? Can you, God forbid, could you listen to an album that hasn't been mastered? Are there albums on Spotify that sound great uh, or that sound really good on Spotify that haven't been mastered? Of course, we there's that totally exists. Now, does that discredit mastering altogether? No, mastering is really a really great thing that can really add to a project. Same thing with mixing or same thing with spending your time on the lyrics. To me, it's not make or break any of one of these individual things, but put together, it does make a really, really overall great package, a really great experience for the fan, for the listener. And so for me, does design really matter? Um, yeah, I think it really does. Um, if you are striving for something to make something really great. The other thing, the other reason why I think that artwork is important is because it's part of the creative process. And because an artist will work on an album, they'll write songs for a year, they'll record and mix and master for another year. And so they've worked on this album for so long. And then to just kind of throw it out there without any thought about how you package it or how you present it to people, to me, just doesn't make any sense. I don't think it's doing the music justice. And so that's why I think artwork matters. Okay, next question. Can I sell the artwork on t-shirts? Posters, stickers, etc. Okay, this is a great question, a question that we had in our Facebook group, um, and it, 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 we, we debated it, we talked about it, and let me explain how it works. Okay, so we're really only talking about if you're hiring a graphic designer to do your artwork. So let's say you hire a graphic designer, and let's say um, you pay them $500 for the project. Now, you, what you need to do is before this all begins, you need to uh, speak with the graphic designer about this question, because you may not be planning to take the album cover and to turn it into a t-shirt down the road or to upsize it to vinyl if, if you have that opportunity. You might just want like a digital graphic to use on Spotify, but it's nice to have that option further down the road or to repurpose the art into something for singles or for remix albums or whatever comes up. And so you kind of want to own that, the layered files, you want to own that artwork like, like you bought the rights completely for it. And so... Generally, when you hire a graphic designer, there's something called work for hire. So you're paying them a flat rate and they get that money and you basically own anything they create in that time. And so they present you with the layered files to them. They don't care. They got paid for the flat rate. They don't care what you do with it after. So you want to kind of like come up with that arrangement and say, listen, we might make these into T-shirts and we might sell them. We might make them into posters and sell them. And so if the artist is OK with that and they're probably going to charge a higher flat rate, in order for you to have the exclusive rights forever to own that artwork. Now, in some cases, an artist might say, no, 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 you're gonna pay me $500, I'm gonna design the square image. And then it's gonna be another $250 if you want me to repurpose that into a vinyl package or a CD digipack a layout. And then it's gonna be another $250 if you want me to repurpose it into a t-shirt. And then if you're gonna sell those t-shirts, I want 10% of your net profits on that. Whatever that arrangement is, all those things are just made up numbers, but it's between you and the, the artist. If the artist is really prestigious, if they've done a lot of these projects, they probably already have a model that they like to follow. And so you kind of just have to comply with how they work. If it's just a friend of yours, just get this all figured out up front. I kind of like the work for hire thing because I don't want it like 10 years down the road, if I'm doing a 10 year anniversary and I want to, repurpose the artwork, put like a gold foil on it or something, or make some t-shirts. 
I don't want to have to find that artist and be like, oh, hey, by the way, and then give 10% of our profits because we don't have a big margin anyway. So to me, it's kind of like if I'm hiring a designer, I'm paying $500, $1,000, $5,000, whatever, up front and saying, I just like to own everything. And hopefully you're giving them enough money for them to say, okay. Next question, how much does a designer cost? This falls in line with what we just talked about. So I just checked on Fiverr. I think Fiverr is a cool place to get designers. You can find designers on Instagram. They A lot of them have really great profiles where they share the work that they've done. If you're looking for a designer who's already done artwork, that's kind of a cool thing. Maybe you're just going to hire a painter or a photographer who's never done album cover. You might be able to get them for a little cheaper. Um, if you have someone who specializes in album artwork, they might charge a little bit more of a premium because they're really good at it and they know what customers like. Um, you can find them on Instagram. You can find them on Fiverr. You can, um, so on Fiverr, for example, I just checked. You can get a, like a little digital graphic. I don't know how great it is to be used on Spotify or Bandcamp for as low as like $50. Um, in between 50 and 250. Like I think you could spend 150 bucks and actually get something pretty cool. Um, however, there's this one person I saw that was offering three packages, three tiers, like $250 just for the digital artwork. Then $500 if you wanted it also like for a CD package. And then $750 if you wanted like digital mock-ups, if you wanted a vinyl version, some social media posts, like the whole package. So there's a bunch of different options you can find on Fiverr. It's kind of cool. Um, yeah. Can my manufacturing plant do the design for me? So this is, um, you know, some people have gone this route and a lot of people, if you're manufacturing CDs or tapes or vinyl, a lot of the plants offer graphic design services as an extra charge. Like it's not included. It's usually like between 250 to a thousand dollars extra. I remember years ago, people, uh, some, I saw some services offering this at a, a, a place that used to do CDs and it was horrible. Like the design was like super cheesy. Um, but I'm sure it's improved and I'm sure each plant has a better option. And some plants out there that we work with do really great work. So you just have to see some examples that they like. One of the advantages of working with your manufacturing plant to design is that if you are doing vinyl, they know exactly the type of file types and the templates that that plant uses. And so there'll be less back and forth with like, oh, your spine isn't lined up or this isn't the right color. Other than that benefit, I probably would just stick to a friend or a designer I admire or somebody on Fiverr. I don't know. What's the difference between RGB and CMYK? So I've been a designer now for quite a long time and I know what this is, but I often forget about it because I start designing digitally. So RGB is kind of like your the digital representation of color. It start, stands for red, green, and blue. And it's a combination of the, these lights on your screen that make the colors that you see on the web. And it, it varies on how old people's devices are, the settings that they have their devices on. So your album cover on your computer might look different on somebody else's computer or on their phone or in a different country. Um, but this is digital. So the colors we use can be really neon and bright. It's because they're using LED lights. They're using the lights behind your screen to show you these big vibrant colors. Whereas CMYK is something that's used in the real world in print, and that stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and believe it or not, black. And these are the colors that they use. These are softer colors, almost even pastel. You can't get these like bright electric colors in print. You can using Pantones, that's another day, but we're just gonna talk about CMYK. So what's happening now is like, your designer is designing something in Photoshop, generally starting in RGB, because they think it's gonna be on Bandcamp, Spotify, and it's looking really vi uh, bright and vibrant, you're, especially in, in colors like green and blue. And then all of a sudden you get a proof from the plant and it looks like purple. It looks like muted blue. It's gross. What's going on? And so this is something that's really difficult to understand uh, that like in the real world, we can't replicate these bright screen colors in the same way. So it's something you have to kind of keep in mind. Um, you can, when your designer is designing, they can change the template or the canvas to, to be in CMYK. So it'll never allow you to make those bright, vibrant colors. You can do kind of two different versions. You can make like a print version and a digital version. It's not that big of a deal. In photographs, you don't really notice it too much. It's just when you're doing like art with really vibrant colors, they transfer a little bit muted unless you use um, Pantones, but we won't get into that today. Can I design the artwork myself? Sure, you can use Canva. Canva's great nowadays. 
Uh, it's putting designers on business, I'm sure. You can use paper and scissors like our friends at Painted Blonde do. Uh, they make, hand make all of their, their album covers. I think that's awesome. Um, you could, uh, you know, just make sure that you are investing in your label at all times, investing in your artist, that you're not doing it yourself to skimp and to save money because you think you're a good designer, because you're probably not. But I do understand that like lo-fi music calls for lo-fi art. I do understand that some genres and some cases like EPs and live stuff that may require DIY approach. Um, and I kind of concede to those exceptions where um, the concept of non-artwork, like if it's an indie rock album and the, the photo is just a grainy film photo of the band, you know, that's cool. I think that's like a non-artwork that ends up being a statement in itself. And I, I love that. So yeah, you can do your own thing. Just make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. You're not just being lazy and cheap. Finally, should you do a style guide or parameters for your record label or like a consistent look to each album cover? Now, like Blue Note, I love a lot of record labels who do this. And some labels will like <clears throat> have like, you know, the layout of their album covers and all that changes is like a color scheme and the name obviously and then a different picture or something. I know a lot of labels who do this really well. I personally love it. I think it's awesome. If I were to start a label again from scratch, I would do it that way. I just think it's really cool. The kind of the music collector in me likes that when it's like you're at a record show and you see a record and you're like, oh, I know what label that's from because it has the same template. I love that. Um, it's really limiting. Some artists don't love that. But if you do go that route, or even if you just go kind of like a similar or like a smaller version of that route, meaning let's say uh, like our friends ATA Records, they just put a logo in the top right corner of their album covers. Or if you are going to say every album cover we do, there's a catalog ID on the back cover or on the spine, whatever. You know what I mean? If it's something small like that, if it's something small or if it's something really big, like the first example I mentioned, either way, you have to let the artist know ahead of time. And I think it's really important to kind of put it in writing as part of your contract, as part of your, as your, just your label ethos and, and mission statement is that like you have this rule. And I mean, if a late, if an artist is approaching you or you've approached them, they'll obviously see that all of your artwork looks the same. So they're probably like, does my artwork have to fall in line with that? Yeah. Okay. It's up to them whether they sign with you or not. Just make sure that's all agreed upon ahead of time. Don't just sit, tell an artist like after the album's done, just before it goes to press. Oh, by the way, you have to follow this new template. Um, it's something you kind of have to establish early on and, and keep with it. Anyway, I hope you found these helpful. If you have more questions, leave them in the comments or, or send a message on through our website. Um, and, you know, we can do another video on artwork. I love artwork. I, I just don't want it to be an afterthought for you. I think it's really important that it is a creative process and, and to allow it to be part of the overall creative process for making records. Go to otherrecordlabels.com slash artwork uh, for the notes from today. And also I've got this like uh, tutorial that you can watch on how to kind of create a brand for your, uh, like a visual brand for your whole album campaign. So there's a tutorial you can watch for free by going to otherrecordlabels.com slash artwork. Thanks for watching.